Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Wheaton with MMA Sucka, and today we have a special guest. He's the coach at the SB Gym. He's coaching people like Bada Hari, Sirkan, and others. We have Saeed El Badawi. How are you doing today, sir? Fine. Uh, at the office, uh, as usually. <laughs> Man, well, yeah, I was wondering, you got a bunch of fighters coming up next week, you, a month from now. You got so many fighters on the go. What's your schedule looking like right now? Are you living at the gym? I live here. Uh, I can uh, better put my bed here upstairs and uh, <laughs> <laughs> just in it. Uh, you're in training all day, is what I'm assuming. It's what we do. That's what you do. So coming up at Glory 80, you have two fighters on the card. In the main event, you have Badahari, and he's going to have a rematch against Arcadius Verdrosic. What's the game plan of getting? How are you getting him ready? What's the game plan in this fight? Tell us everything about this. The game plan. We don't have a game plan because we're gonna do what we did uh, the last uh, time, you know. And uh, you have seen the fight, and uh, we, we're not gonna change anything. The only thing what we're gonna do is uh, keep sharp, and uh, that's the thing. Yeah, stay sharp, work in the body. Bader yeah. was having uh, one of his a really good fight against Arcadius, except for the one kick. Right, he was winning the whole fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's absolutely. True. Go ahead. Yeah, you know that uh, that can happen uh, in every fight. You know you can uh, have a dominant fight, but uh, you must be sharp on uh, every second uh, in the game. And uh, but you know it was a good fight and for us. Uh, what we can say, you know, uh, we trained some things and you you saw it back in the in the fight, and uh, that's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, and he looked good, and I'm looking forward to the fight as well. So after the fight, Badahari runs away with a victory. What do you want to see Bader do next? Do you want to see him challenge for a title? Do you want to see him fight another heavyweight in glory? What would you think is the best path for, forward for the man? I think for now it's not important, you know. This fight is the most important fight, and then after this fight we can see, you know, because otherwise you're going to talk about other fights, and uh, we didn't uh, win this fight uh, already, you know. I think for now it's focused on this fight. And, and after this fight, we're going to see uh, uh, what's going to happen. Oh, absolutely. And I've also uh, spoken with one of the other gentlemen that you're working with who's fighting at Glory 80 is Sir Sirkan Okuglian. And I, and I know I'm saying the, same, the name wrong. He was laughing at me about that as well. <laughs> but Sirkan, he's a great prospect. He's got one win in Glory. He's probably going to get another knockout at Glory 80. How are you getting Sirkan ready? This kid's awesome. Yeah, it's a good boy. He trained very hard. And... Um, yeah. His fight at Glory was a was yeah it was a very fast uh, fight and um, yeah we're looking forward for his second fight in Glory uh, yeah and uh, he prepared good for the fight and uh, we are ready for uh, for uh, for the date. Do you want him to get a little bit more time in the ring or are you just saying like yeah if you get a knockout in ten seconds just take it and <laughs> we'll worry about the rest later or do you want him to slow down and full fight a full three round fight? If the knockout is there, then he's there, you know. I, I can never say to fight, uh, hey, take your time. Hey, if the moment is there, because if you don't do it, maybe your opponent has one opportunity, and then uh, it's going to be uh, an other uh, thing. Absolutely. And H Hamicha is the other guy I wanted to ask about as well. Any news, any updates on this one? No, he had an injury of his last fight. Mm. He, um, he has a surgery, and... Um, it uh, went well, and uh, he's now on recovering. And uh, when he's back in shape, uh, then we go, uh, we go again. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing him fighting again. You have such a good roster here at this gym. I absolutely love it. But no, you've been in the kickboxing game. You've been at the gym for at least 20 years now. What first got you into kickboxing? Who first inspired you to get into kickboxing? Yeah, at the time, you know, we had at the time the K1, the heavyweight division at that time. We had a very good fighters, but, uh, you know, the history of the Dutch kickboxing, like Ramon Deckers, uh, uh, Rob Kaman, and Mr. Host, yeah, that, that, that was uh, the boys who uh, were making the kickboxing very famous uh, in the world and here in Holland. Man, Ernesto Host, like, he, you can still watch his fights and just teach. Like, he's still so technical. You can do a whole striking, like, uh, instructional based on his fights from 25 years ago still. 
you know we had a very good history you know the 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 basics in the in the kickboxing the dutch style is is a very famous in the whole world and uh it's a thing uh, uh that we u- use uh, still and i think uh, i think the the most important thing is is the basics are uh, very important you know and uh, what you see in this time uh, we focus a lot of on other things but we we forgot the, the the good basics and now in this time what you see uh, if you want to be uh, want to be a good fighter, you must make your hours in, in in kickboxing, in your kicks, in your punches, in everything, you know. But is this time what happening um, is that a lot of fighters um, working forty percent on her kickboxing skills or boxing skills, forty percent they work on uh, the power training, strength and conditioning training, and twenty percent they do yoga, you know. Mm-hmm. And you see now the difference. The level in, in Holland is not the same as it was before. Because it's if you want to be a good footballer, you make a lot of hours with the ball, you know, on the street, you know, uh, or, that's how it how it is. But a lot of things change, you know. People watch a lot of on social media. Hey, this one do power uh, station conditioning. It's good to do, but there must be a balance, and there is no balance now. You see, boys do much more straight and conditioning training than than make hours in in their kickboxing skills. Yeah, that, that's a really interesting thing where they might be distracted by other things. Do you think the prevalence of mixed martial arts as well has been a little bit distracting to a lot of people who would have been amazing kickboxers but spent, you know, 30% of their time defending takedowns or jiu-jitsu or something like that rather than focus on kickboxing? Do you think that had any effect on it? Okay, I think you must have focus on one thing, you know. If you want to, mm. uh, to go to uh, do MMA... And then, then you must uh, must work on on your takedown defense. You're gonna do BGG or wrestling, and that's okay, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you, I, I, I don't believe in um, you doing um, still fighting kickboxing, but also you fight MMA. You must have one focus on one thing. If you want to be good in one thing, then you must have the focus. And in this time, what you see. Yeah, the boys, they want to fight on the highest level kickboxing. They want to fight on the highest level MMA. And I think it's good to have, uh, if you ha- want to um, change to something else, then you must put your focus on it and uh, make your uh, hours uh, in, in that thing. Yeah, no, that I think that makes a lot of sense as well. Um, so the training that you do at the gym, does any of it focus on um, things that, like handling anxiety when you're going into big fights or any kind of the mental training? Because that's the stuff that a lot of fighters can do well in the gym but in the ring itself can be sometimes a struggle. Do you guys focus on any of that sort of stuff of like picturing, anxiety, you know what I mean? When we train, you should focus on all of our points. You, know? you must be complete. And um, the most important thing here in training is, is uh, to give everything you have because it's all uh, also a thing when you grow mental. And some days it's not uh, a good day, but that the days are you grow the most. And I think also in your training, uh, you you must give everything because um, there you grow also m- and mental. Because if you stay in your comfort zone and train uh, like uh, how you want, and uh, you get in your fight, and it will be a very difficult fight. It's easy to uh, to to quit. That's true, and it's hard for a lot of people. They can do well in the gym, but the mental aspects of being in the ring. It, it's different. It's a tougher atmosphere, right? But Glory 80 coming up on March 19th. You got two fighters on the card. I'm excited for this event. It's going to be a big one. And this was one of my favorite things. When I reached out to the community, I said, I'm interviewing Saeed. Do you guys have any questions? And you know, the only people who know who you are are hardcore kickboxing fans, right? So we didn't get a lot of bad questions. So these were the listener questions. So thank you to Hamza for these questions. But how many years do you see Bader fighting for? You know, I think you must always uh, uh, see it for a fight uh, to a fight, you know. And um, I think for a fighter, if the, the moment is there, there is no fire or you don't have passion in your trainings and things, then the fighter must ask himself the question, uh, uh, still I go on or, or I quit, you know. That's the only answer a fighter can give. The people not can give you uh, that answer. That answer, you know it on yourself. And you know how it works in this world. If you um, always win your fights, you have a lot of friends. But in the bad time, of, in the times uh, it not goes well, and everyone uh, has something to say, or you must quit, or this, you know. I think 
never forgot what the the fight is uh, did and uh, and we all have in life uh, a situation or a time it uh, it not uh, go well but uh, but you see in the last fight of uh, the fighter uh, of the UFC Glock Teixeira on uh, 42 years he 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 became champion you know and i think uh, always believe in yourself and uh, and and in the end you do it for yourself yeah, there, you can have a lot of success uh, into old age. Randy Couture, Glover Teixeira, these people were uh, definitely not young people by any means and still have great success. Bader's one of the greatest talents we've ever seen in kickboxing, and we've ha had a long time of watching him because he entered the sport when he was so young. He's undoubtedly one of the most talented kickboxers in history. Where do you rank him in the greatest of all time list? I got to tell you one thing, you know, he's uh, of two generations... Uh... Of kickboxing he's from the the generation of the k1 time you know the heavyweight divisions at that time and he is from the generation of this this time you know and um uh, i can say you one thing um for me it's also an honor to work with him why he's always dedicated and still have the hunger you know uh he um uh, oh we have five children he have a family and uh and when he come to the gym, always he 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 put the Mexican in in, in his training. And um, and I like to work with people who uh, who always uh, have the discipline. But same as uh, Melvin Manuf, I have him here also as a student. You know, he's forty five years old and also always dedicated. And they are at the first at the gym and uh, always. Uh, it's it's I like to work with that people. And Murat is fighting uh, he, like next week. I think by the time this interview goes out, it'll be tomorrow he's fighting. How are you getting him prepared for his fight against Roman Krilia? Yeah, we know what he must do against Krilia, you know. Uh, only uh, this time I cannot be uh, be there with him because um, I had some things also here in Holland to do. And also uh, there are other fighters. Uh, they have fights. Uh, but... I believe he, he knows what to do against uh, Kirikia, you know, and uh, Kirikia also is a good fighter, but uh, but Murat also. I, I agree with you. Murat, Murat is an incredible fighter. He's such a good talent. How do you see Bader versus Alistair Overeem if they fought a third time? You know, it, it will be a very good fight, I think, because, you know, uh, both they are uh, at the time from the K1, you know, uh, and I think it uh, for, the, for the audience, it will be a very good fight. I, I would love to see the fight. I think that'd be a fun one to do as well. Uh, we also have some listener questions from the Beyond Kickboxing folks. Um, for training Botter, he's such a superstar. Is there any differences in training a superstar versus anyone else? Or for you, is it a, a system that you've applied to everybody and it's been working? Or, is, you know you know what I mean? No, every, every fighter have, have his uh, strong points, you know, and... Uh... And uh, and you try always to work on the the points that are uh, uh, not so good as the 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 strong points. And I think um, in at the young age uh, of him, he, he had a knockout in everything in his knees, his kicks, uh, everything he has a knockout. You know, but sometimes when you not practice some things, then you lose it. You know how they call it: if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's uh, I think how it is. Sometimes it's always very, uh, very important to go back to the basics. And with basics, you always win a fight. The basics win you the fight. Absolutely. I, I love that advice. What advice would you give to some of the younger people who are looking for success in kickboxing? What advice would you be giving to these folks? You know, discipline is a very uh, important thing. And, uh, and the second thing is it uh, never going to be uh, always how you want it or on the way you want it. And, um, uh, but still focus and, uh, you know, it's uh, how they call it, it's a slogan. Hard works beat talent when talent doesn't work, you know. And that's the thing, uh, what I see in a lot of boys here. They have been not so much talent, but they work very hard and they uh, reach uh, at the end their goal. Hard work. That's what we've heard from some of the other guys. Sirkan said the same thing. It's time in the gym. That's the most important thing. So you have two fighters coming up. Glory 80, March 19th. My name is Tim Wheaton with MMA Sucka, joined by Saeed of, uh, of SB Gym. Now, you get the last word here. Tell the folks where can they find more of you. What do you got going on? Plug whatever you need to plug. Saeed, go ahead, sir. <laughs> can I say watch the events and uh, yeah. Just That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate your time, sir. Have a wonderful afternoon. 
Yeah. Thank you.